Welcome to module number 10. Uh, we are five weeks away from the final and uh, six from the end of the course. This is about the time when students start submitting assignments, especially those who have fallen behind. Uh, I was that kind of a student when I was in college, so I am not at all uh, surprised when it happens. Um, I want to remind you that all assignments are available to be turned in when, until we hit the do until date. At that time, I will not accept any late assignments. But from now until we reach that date in December, you are able to catch up if you have fallen behind without any punishment. NCL will have the, uh, the team game this weekend. So if you haven't formed a team yet, please do so because that is part of your grade that you participated in the team game. Uh, so don't, don't forget on, on doing that this weekend. Use Discord to form your team. Uh, it is definitely, you, know, you paid $35 to play, you should definitely play the team game. A question that I have received is uh, in the team game, if one person solves a question, uh, everyone else doesn't need to solve it because you're now answering as a team. So whoever answers a question solved it, not just for themselves, but for the entire team. If you do come up with any other questions, feel free to use uh, Discord. Now, let's begin in the lecture. The picture of the week. I believe this is a Sonic who seems to be running uh, XP and it crashed. This uh, chapter is all about mobile. Knowing is half the battle, so being aware of what mobile devices are on your network and or using your resources is highly important, especially in today's world where everybody is completely remote. So you need to be aware of what is connecting into your network. Um, as security professionals, we have to keep devices such as tablets, smartphones, wearable technology, laptops, and web-based computers in mind. These devices can connect through various methods to our networks such as cellular, satellite, infrared, USB. These different communications allow devices to always be connected but can also provide attackers with multiple ways to enter our secured network through these devices. In an enterprise, we have a couple of deployment methods, and these that you see here are the most common. The benefits of these guys are BOID and CYOD ease management's burden by eliminating the need to select a wireless data carrier and manage plans for employees. Businesses don't need to monitor billing or overages for uh, for overages or extra charges. Businesses can often offer a stipend for BOID and CYOD, which is less than the device and the plan. Employees tend to be more productive with a device they like. Since the devices are already online, IT doesn't have to get extra infrastructure. And BOID, COPE, and CYOD, users need to contact their carrier support before contacting uh, your IT for help. In this time where we're all working remote, bring your own device is the predominant with uh, the corporate owned personally enabled as the second or the corporate owned. You know, if somebody doesn't have that equipment, they can, they can loan it to get uh, from the business, but most often it's BYOD. Of course, there are tons of risks 
uh, the first and foremost risk that you have with mobile is physical security. Because they're, well, they're mobile, they can be stolen. Uh, mobile devices are built to support up to a certain OS version. And then it'll be time to buy a new device to stay current. Uh, a lot of vendors that use Android make updates uh, from Google slower. And so leaving more devices unprotected. Google has been working to fix that uh, so they can uh, send modular updates regardless of the, of the manufacturer, but that's still pretty rampant. Whereas Apple will just force you to buy a new phone by slowing it down. Uh, location tracking. Any misconfigured apps or apps that have way too many permissions and malware can leak geolocation information, causing an increased risk of a targeted physical attack. You constantly find more apps, more malware apps in both the App Store and the Google Play Store. Neither one is better than the other. And unauthorized recording. As with location tracking, malware and misconfigured apps can quietly capture audio and video. You also have connection vulnerabilities like tethering. Infected systems can propagate malware when they're tethered. A USB on the go. Malware can spread from computer to device. And of course, uh, connecting to public networks where attackers can eavesdrop on data transmissions and view sensitive information. Not so much a problem right now since we're all sheltered in place, uh, but it will be a problem once we're back out on about. There's also, of course, users accessing uh, untrusted content through things like QR codes, through routing, or even through text messaging, it is possible to send malware. Your deployment model risks. If you give people a device, uh, that user may try uh, to get around any limitations by jailbreaking or rooting the device. Personal mobile devices are typically shared with others and can expose sensitive corporate data to outsiders. Your family is considered an outsider, not an insider. Different devices have different hardware and operating systems. So tech support has to be able to manage many devices and various configurations. Mobile devices that are infected can easily infect an organization when they connect to that network. It is also difficult to erase a personal smartphone from an employee who left the company. This is another problem of BOID, is the, that device that they bring could be their personal device. And when they leave the company, you don't necessarily have the right to get on that personal device and remove the accounts. So you have to find other ways to disable the account so that uh, or disable and erase the data from that device, irregardless if it's a corporate owned or a personal. Uh, here's uh, some best practices to protect mobile devices. But you know, because they're best practice, it uh, doesn't mean they're always used. So uh, number one, disabling unused features. Anything that's unnecessary or unused, like Bluetooth, should be disabled when it's not being used. Or when uh, you are no longer in range of your access point, you disable Wi-Fi. Strong authentication, setting a screen lock with an extended lockout period and reset to factory after a number of failed attempts. Pins are very easy to compute and should not be used. Biometrics can be used as a second factor. If uh, you allow a swipe pattern, educate users to clean their screen 
because otherwise it's very easy to notice from the residue what the what the swipe pattern is. Um, it is more or less default now that devices are encrypted, but always ensure that device is fully encrypted so that if it is stolen, data can't be read. It is better to reset a device that is stolen uh, because the data will still remain secure. Yes, they'll have the device, but your data, which is the, the most important thing for the organization will still be safe because it was encrypted. So have a, a sort of kill switch to erase the device should it be stolen. To that end, you have mobile management tools that you can deploy from your infrastructure to control. Uh, some users don't like it, but you know if you're gonna if you're gonna use your mobile device on our network to access our resources, you need to abide by some rules. So mobile device management can help you with onboarding and offboarding devices to modify settings, uh, to approve or quarantine devices, erase data, and uh, you know set policies. You can control distribution of applications to devices through these uh, mobile management systems. And you can uh, edit and support modification of digital content by multiple employees by utilizing uh, you know, the various systems to manage these. Other systems that you need to watch out for are things like embedded systems. These are everywhere from HVACs to ICSs to SCADA systems. HVAC being your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. ICS, your industrial control systems. And SCADA, your supervisory control and data acquisition. These technologies appear in our cars, our grocery stores, oil pumps. They control power grids and run space communications. Many of them run on system on a chip, SOC, or like, uh, like a Raspberry Pi, or real-time operating systems. In all of these cases, the systems do not have any means or features outside of what they're built to do. Therefore, security is completely gone. And you have to build security around those devices. This is a mix of those embedded systems. This is an example of a wastewater SCADA system. There is also Internet of Things. These are devices that previously did not have internet access, but now do, from thermostats to coffee makers, tire sensors, slow cookers, keyless entry systems, washing machines, electric toothbrushes, uh, headphones, light bulbs, body sensors, so on and so forth. Just like the embedded systems, security wasn't built in mind. Since when does a fridge have security uh, placed in it or a fan or a coffee maker? It just makes coffee. Why should it have security? But you know, the big question of always is what could possibly go wrong? These can all become vectors uh, for an attack because the malicious actor knows that uh, these systems don't have security in mind. It's easy to exploit them and find their way in. This is how a casino was attacked. The, uh, the pump for one of their, their aquariums was connected to the internet and had no security. So the attacker was able to get into the, the casino network through that pump. If these exist in your network, you need to watch out because they can be easy ways for an attacker to infiltrate your network. Fun stuff.
Now, as always, you have some uh, systems in Try Hack Me to work on. And if it's not available, just find another one that's mobile. Uh, yeah, so find, find a, a Try Hack Me room that is mobile related, like this Android 101, and then write a report. Now, when I say report, I don't mean a 10 page essay. I just mean you, you write what you found and how it ties with the OWASP top 10 for mobile. So you'll work on that room as you work through it, look at the top 10 from OWASP and see what, what did you find, which uh, what vulnerabilities or what challenges matched what in the OWASP top 10 for mobile. And again, if this room is not available, just find another one that is, and you can do the same, uh, the same exact lab. But I'm not expecting uh, pages upon pages of reporting. I'm really talking to more of, of like paragraphs because I get it. This, this isn't an English class. This is a hands-on, you're, you're learning, you're exposing yourself to this stuff. And, uh, and you should not be doing this all on your own. Now, I've mentioned this many times in the course, you should be working together with others. I don't expect you to do it all on your own. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask away in the Discord. <laughs>